Hello, everyone, and welcome to SCORE Fairfield County's live webinar on QuickBooks reporting, what you should be running and reviewing and why. I'm Tim Ryan, the webinar coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County. I'll be your host. Our speaker today is Karen Schwartz. More on Karen in just a minute. First, some brief info on SCORE. There's about 300 uh, offices and 11,000 volunteers nationwide. We're part of the SBA. SCORE Fairfield County has 100 plus volunteers with a wide range of industry, process, and subject matter expertise. We offer three primary evaluated services to small business owners. First, free one-on-one -on -one counseling, which can be accessed via the request mentor screen link on our website or via the link on the screen. Second, we do educational workshops and webinars like this one, over 100 per year. And third, we have extensive resources on our website, such as Word and Excel templates to help you build your business plan. Some useful info about today's event. If you have a question, please use the chat window at any time during the presentation. It's located in the lower part of your screen. Our webinar will end by 1 p.m. to respect your time. The session is being recorded and the link to the recording will be available at fairfieldcounty.score.org within the next couple of days. Now our speaker. Karen Schwartz is the founder and principal of Time and Sense Consultants, LLC, as well as an associate of 3545 Consulting. She helps legal and other service professionals select, install, and get the most out of their practice management, billing, accounting, and other firm-specific technologies. Karen's an advanced certified pro advisor on QuickBooks and QuickBooks Online, as well as a certified consultant on a number of billing, accounting, and practice management solutions. I'll now turn it over to Karen. Karen, it's all yours. Thank you for that kind introduction. So I'm gonna just skip on to my next slide. Small businesses have a very high failure rate, uh, but you can improve your odds of your business succeeding by monitoring your business and reacting to changes in a timely manner. If you wait till the end of the year to see how your business is doing, it may be too late to make the adjustments that you need to do in order to make your business not only survive, but thrive. Now, organizations like SCORE can definitely help you, but it's up to you to be taking proactive uh, steps to look at how your business is doing. One of the ways you can do that is by using financial tools to track the information about your business and then run the reports for seeing how that goes, how your business is doing. Don't wait until the end of the year for you to give your information to the accountant and the accountant to come and say, oh, are you aware of this? Or maybe you should be doing this. Review your, inf review your reports and then talk to your accountant about questions on how you can make things better in a very timely manner. We're gonna be talking about QuickBooks today because it is the most common small business solution for accounting, but the same things that I'm going to say hold true for any software because you might be using software that's specific to your type of business. Also, I'm going to be talking about general reports. You may have some specific reports that you need to run because of the type of business you're in. For example, a law firm needs to run a three-way reconciliation of their IOLTA account on a monthly basis. We're not going to get into those very specific report types. Those are things that I can help with uh, separately. So there's a large range of solutions offered by QuickBooks. There are both desktop and online solutions. What you see is a list of the four different desktop alternatives. They are all subscription. That means you have to pay for them each year or your database will become read only. 
Uh, prior to QuickBooks 2022, there was a non-subscription version, but that was done away with in uh, October or Dece Dece in early December of, of 2021. So they are now all going to be subscription and that's something to be aware of. Um, which version you need depends on the feature set that you want, how many users you're going to have, and you know uh, what size your business is. If you need a large number of users logged in simultaneously, uh, or you have a very large number of clients, uh, then you may want to use enterprise. But it's going to get what the right solution is for you is going to depend uh, and a QuickBooks certified pro advisor like myself or any of the people that you can find that are certified on the find a pro advisor site from Intuit can help you as well. In terms of QuickBooks online, there is self-employed. And so these are ones that run in the cloud, which give you anywhere, anytime access, but you are again paying a monthly or an annual fee. Self-employed is really designed for an independent contractor who files a Schedule C, and it really works nicely on your phone where you can swipe for whether something is personal or business. And, you know, it's just it's designed for very small self-employed um, companies. Simple Start is, again, a fairly basic solution. But it may be sufficient if you're just starting out a new business. But if you need to do things like payables and receivables, then it may not be adequate for you. There is also an essentials version and a plus version. And then there is the advanced, which is for uh, firms with more complex needs and um, <clears throat> with more complex needs and larger uh, database requirements, like lots of customers or vendors or a very large chart of accounts. And you can start in Simple Start or Essentials and move up to the next level if your needs change or your solution is not adequate for you. So in order to determine which QuickBooks is right for you, the first thing to do is to consider your environment and what kind of access you need. Do you want something that is available to multiple people anywhere, anytime? If you do, then you may want to look at QuickBooks Online because that is going to give you that capability. If you are a you know solo and you can stick the program on a laptop and you're the only one who's going to need access to it, except for maybe giving information to your accountant once a year or more often if appropriate, then QuickBooks Desktop might be a good solution. If you have complex inventory needs, Desktop is generally going to be a better solution, although there are add-ins for QuickBooks Online that make it a very good fit for, um, for complex inventory. So there are add-ins for both QuickBooks and Desktop, although there are more uh, for both Online and Desktop, although there are more options for QuickBooks Online. So the benefits of Q QBO, or that it is cloud-based, you go to a website, you log in, and it's done. You don't have to worry about maintaining equipment. You don't have to do upgrades. It can be run from a Mac. It can be run from a Windows computer. Um, you don't have to worry about getting the data to your accountant. You give them a login, and they can log in. And there is a huge ecosystem of apps that integrate with QBO to give you a large number of, um, report, of uh, additional add-on benefits that can customize it for you based on reporting needs, based on um, industry-specific needs, based on all kinds of things. So very um, powerful ecosystem that is available to you. So now let's get to the heart of what we were going to talk about. There are a large number of reports available in QuickBooks. And you need to think about what ones are most important for your business. I have listed here a large number of the reports that I really consider key. Now, the are you going to run every one of these all the time? No. But 
you should be running most of these, depending on, again, your type of business, on a regular basis, especially the balance sheet and the profit and loss, and the profit and loss as a comparison. So let's just talk a little bit about a couple of these of some of these reports, and then we're going to go in and we're going to actually look at the reports. So the balance sheet is going to show you. Oh, excuse me a minute. The balance sheet is going to show you your assets, your liabilities, and your um, owner's equity. So the assets are the things that you own, the liabilities are what you owe, and the equity is the money that you have invested in the company or the money that has been retained in the company from prior year profits. The balance sheet is called the balance sheet because the balance of the assets is going to be equal to the liabilities plus the equity. And we're going to take a look at some of these reports in a little bit. But it's important to look at this because you want to make sure that your assets exceed your liabilities. It's really a good idea to have more that you own than that you owe. Now, there may be some reasons to for that, you know, maybe a mortgage or on a building that's important for you or things like that. But that's something to look at. If you are doing, um, if you are a business that has inventory, you want to look at your levels of inventory and how that's doing. You want to see there are a large number of ratios that you can run using information from your balance sheet and to see how you are are doing, and you can compare those ratios to other businesses of your type. So the balance sheet is a good source of information to see just, you know, how much cash do I have? What, a, what are my assets? What do I owe to people? And how soon is that money due? And those, that kind of information. The profit and loss statement is sometimes called an income statement. It's the same exact thing, just two different names for the same thing. The profit and loss shows you how your business is doing from a financial point of view. What is my income and what are my expenses against that income? And have I gained, have I, uh, do I have a profit or am I operating at a loss? Now, the income statement is not the same as your cash. You could be making money and still not have cash flow because the of a couple of reasons. Number one, you could be spending that money uh, that you've made on things on your balance sheet, like buying a new vehicle or buying a building or buying inventory. All of those are going to affect your bank account but they will not affect your profit and loss statement. So you have to be aware of that. And that's why you want to look at these together. You also want to look at them in a comparison to prior periods and prior years to see what are the trends. Because just saying, well, I made 50 bucks last month may be a wonderful thing. Or if you made $300 last month, last year in the same month. Well, why am I down so much? And those are the kinds of things that looking at profit and loss comparisons can tell you and help you in making a decision promptly. Bank reconciliations should be done in a very timely manner. Number one is that banks sometimes make mistakes. And despite the law of averages, I have found that more often than not, the bank errors are in the bank's favor and not in yours. If you catch the error in a timely manner, the bank has an obligation to fix it. If you wait six months to report the error to the bank, they are relieved of that obligation. So it's very important that you do your bank reconciliation timely. Additionally, Unfortunately, there are people that do things that they shouldn't and commit fraud. 
If you are doing bank reconciliations, you are more likely to catch that fraud. To that end, the owner of the firm should be doing the bank reconciliations, not just letting the person who does all the writing of checks and all of that do it, because then you don't have any cross check. Even if you want to have the bookkeeper or office administrator do the bank reconciliation, the owner of the firm should at least open up the bank statement and review it and look at the checks that were written to make sure that they were proper, that they look proper. And most banks will provide you with uh, include a page or multiple pages that show what the actual checks look like. They tend to not return physical checks anymore, but they usually include images. And that's an important way to review the checks to help to prevent fraud and to catch errors. Accounts receivable is what do your clients owe you? Really important report to run because it is much easier to collect from a client when the debt is new than when it is old. If somebody is happy with your service and you send them a bill promptly, they're more likely to pay it than if you wait two months to bill them or if you send the bill but they don't pay and then you wait two or three months to try to collect. So timeliness of knowing what people owe you and um, billing them for it, but also making sure that they've paid is very important. This also has a big impact on cash flow. If you've sold a lot of stuff, but you haven't been paid for it yet, that's not going to benefit your cash flow. Accounts payable is what do you owe to other people? Again, important to know, for one thing, if you pay a certain vendors a lot, you may be able to negotiate them with them for better terms or for some discounts because you are a good customer. If you do not keep an eye on your accounts payable, you don't know that. Also, if vendors do offer terms, you want to be able to take advantage of that. Or if vendors do charge interest, if you don't pay in a timely manner, you want to know that so that you can make sure you pay those vendors more timely. If a vendor does not charge interest and you are in a small cash flow bind, the vendors that don't charge interest are the ones that you may want to try to hold off a little bit. But definitely talk to them and let them know. Don't just avoid paying because you don't want to alienate important vendors. If you are a firm that does uh, time and expenses, so a professional services firm or a construction that maybe is doing things based on costs and things like that, it's important to bill that in a timely manner. So you wanna know what is unbilled so that you can bill it because until you actually bill it, you are not collecting anything and not helping your cash flow. And if you have incurred expenses on behalf of clients, you want to get reimbursed for that as quickly as possible. You may want to run reports of employee productivity to see what your employees are, are um, contributing to the company. So, you know, um, is, client, is employee A, you know, much more productive than employee B? You not want to look not only at how much time they are putting in, but how much of that time is billable and how much of that time is collected. Because if an employee spends six hours doing something, but you can only bill for three hours of that, and then because of comments from customers or something like that, you reduce the bill even further, so it now becomes two hours, that is a big adjustment. And it's important to look at that as part of evaluating your employees. If they need more training, then that's something you want to look at. You want to look at the people who are high performers and reward them, but also not only reward them, but learn from them. 
how can they help the other employees in the firm to reach similar levels of productivity, which will benefit the firm as a whole. Looking at sales by customer is beneficial in terms of knowing who your best customers are. You may wanna offer them some promotions or if you're looking at new services, may want to talk to them about it to see if it's a good fit for them. These are the key people that you want to be talking to and marketing to. Now, now sales is very important, but you also want to look at how they are doing on accounts receivable. Because a customer that buys a huge amount from you, but takes 90 days to pay you, is not necessarily as valuable as a customer who buys less, but pays you very promptly. So you want to weigh both sides of that. Another factor in evaluating your business is your sales by product and service. So how much are you selling of different products or different services? This can help you in knowing what should I be getting rid of? What changes should I make in my offerings? What uh, services or products are not profitable? And where should I maybe be looking to expand? I mentioned a bunch of things about your vendors and your purchases in terms of the account payable, but it's also important to look at that in the purchases by vendor because the accounts payable is a big factor in your cash flow because that's when do you owe them. But how much have you purchased from different vendors can really help you in negotiating with those vendors. Now, of course, you're not gonna be able to, to negotiate with you know, certain vendors like perhaps Staples or um, you know, American Express and things like that. But there are a large number of vendors that most firms are using that they can negotiate with. When I was talking about your balance sheet and your profit and loss, I mentioned the difference between cash and income. Cash is what you've actually got in the bank. Income is what is the difference between your income and your expenses. So your net income, they can be different because of things on the balance sheet that I mentioned. Things like loans will not affect your profit and loss, but will affect your cash flow. Buying at fixed assets will affect your balance sheet, but not your will affect your cash flow, but not your profit and loss, not your bottom line net income. So a statement of cash flow to see how your cash has changed and what are your cash needs and what have they been can be very helpful because if you are going to have a large cash need, knowing it in advance gives you a way to go look at sources to fill that need on it for whatever period of time it might be, like maybe getting a loan. It is much easier if you can do that in advance rather than after you know you're already in major need much more much more and many more options when it's in advance so a statement of cash flow and as a follow on to that even some forecasting can be very helpful now these bottom 3 are legal requirements and you want to be running those reports to make sure that you are meeting all of your legal requirements. If you are selling uh, in Connecticut or in other places, you very well may owe sales tax. Now, it depends on what you are doing. The sales tax laws in Connecticut and in other states as well are incredibly convoluted. And I am not a sales tax expert by any stretch of the imagination, but it is important to be aware of it and to find the resources to help you in making sure you are properly collecting sales tax and properly submitting it to the government. And if you sell outside the state of Connecticut, you may have what's called nexus, 
which means you are considered to have a presence in other states and you may need to be filing sales tax reports and submitting sales tax to those other states. There are services that can help you with this um, and your accountant may be able to help you as well, but you wanna make sure that you are obeying the laws because a sales tax audit is uh, not a fun thing, especially if you find out you owe a large amount. So you wanna have everything being done properly so that if you get a sales tax audit, you can come through with no changes. If you have employees, you must be paying payroll, you must be paying them payroll, and you must be withholding for federal income tax, state taxes, depending on the state, um, and also Social Security and Medicare. And you must be submitting those to the government in a timely manner, or else you will end up with large penalties that could cost you an enormous amount in the long run. There are payroll services, including some that, uh, one that is integrated right into both QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online that work with QuickBooks sponsored by Intuit that will do the work for you. There are also outside services that do integrate in with QuickBooks in various ways, or that you can just put entries into QuickBooks and they will handle everything for you. Depending on the size of your employee base. Uh, there are probably other things you need to be withholding for or paying for, like unemployment compensation, health insurance you may need, and other things. And so you want to make sure that you are carefully obeying the rules and doing the proper reporting. And then there are 1099s. Those were due to be sent out by January 31st. If you haven't done them, I suggest you get going because better late than never. The penalties are only going to get worse. 1099s are for things like rent and non-employee compensation um, and a number of other different categories, but those are the most common. Anyone who is a vendor that is not a corporation that you pay over $600 in a year should be getting a 1099. Whether a person who is, quote, working for you as a consultant, perhaps, or in some other role should be on payroll or on 1099 is a very fine line. And you want to make sure that you carefully evaluate that because there can be issues if you consider someone a 1099 employee who should be on payroll. So it's something you want to research and maybe talk with your accountant or uh, somebody who specializes in that area about. Karen, uh, we did have a question. Uh, sure. Do you know any payroll services besides Intuit that integrate with uh, QB? Yeah, um, I've heard a lot of good things about Gusto. And um, I've also know some people that have worked with Patriot and have been happy with that and it integrates. Now the integrations are different um, and there are limitations. A lot of them, they just bring in journal entries. So they just create a journal entry that you can import. It's not quite the same as the Intuit payroll where you you know, just say, okay, here's the information, upload, download, and it's there and it's done. But um, those are a couple. I believe ADP also has some integrations Sure, um, and paychecks, I believe. Uh, yes, so there are a number of them, but um, what the two that are less commonly known that I know people who have had good experiences with are Gusto and Patriot. So now I've talked a lot about reports. Let's go in and see what um, what we see some of the reports. So I am going to, let me move the Q&A panel over here and let me uh, change my sharing to my other computer, other monitor and bring up QuickBooks. So hopefully you are now all seeing QuickBooks desktop. 
Now, most of what I'm going to show you can also be done in QuickBooks Online. And I will try to answer specific questions about QuickBooks Online, and I can show you QuickBooks Online if we need to. Um, but just a quick tip, if you are thinking about using QuickBooks Online and you want to test it out, if you go in and you Google or search for, to use the generic, QuickBooks Online test drive, or just QuickBooks test drive, you will find a link that you can open and play with QuickBooks. Now, when you leave all of the, if you put in data, that's fine. But when you leave, all the data will leave. But it is a nice way to test out QuickBooks without setting up a test account, which you can do. You can get a 30-day trial version. But I like to go in at a start and play with the with the uh, test drive. The test drive can also be useful if you want to try doing something and see you're using QuickBooks Online. You want to see how something would affect your system, how something might work. You can open up the test drive and you can put in dummy transactions, and nobody's going to see them other than you. And when you leave, they are totally gone. All right, so can you see my QuickBooks desktop? Yes. Okay, great. So I am going to start by going into reports. Now, when I click on reports up here at the top, I have a report center, I have memorized reports, I have scheduled reports, and then I have a whole list of different reports. The report center is just a way of looking at all of those reports that were listed in that list of reports with little previews of them. So it's a little bit slower in terms of getting to a report, but if you don't really know what report you want or you want to just kind of get a little glimmer or get some more information, the report center is very useful. You will notice on the left, the reports are are broken into groups. Um, and then down here, I have some that are industry specific. Now, generally, you will not see the industry specific ones unless you have purchased that industry version of QuickBooks. I am using the QuickBooks Accountants Edition, so I get to see all the different versions. But the QuickBooks Premier, and QuickBooks Enterprise do come in different versions. And so if one of these particular areas of business applies to you, you may want to consider getting that edition of, pre of QuickBooks Premium or QuickBooks um, Enterprise. Um, you can use QuickBooks for your personal and business. If you are using QuickBooks Desktop, you can create as many QuickBooks company files as you want. So you could have one file for your personal and you could have one for your business. Alternatively, you know, if you're a fairly small business, you could put everything in the same one. But I think it is better to keep them separate because you can run more accurate reports. If you are using the personal and the business in the same one, I do would still recommend having separate bank accounts and I would use classes so that you can run reports to separate out the personal from the business. Um, QuickBooks is okay for personal, but if you have a lot of financial investments like stocks and bonds um, or a lot of loans that are personal, QuickBooks is not the best program for that because it doesn't really have good support for that. Um, and there are programs that are designed for personal finances that can do a better job with that. Hope that answers your question. Um, so now, um, what you're seeing here is I'm on the company and financial, and this is showing me the profit and loss, the income statement types of reports. And if I scroll down a little bit, it's going to take me to the income and expense reports and then the balance sheet report. So these are all the different reports that 
QuickBooks is grouping under QuickBooks com under company and financial reports. And we also have our statement of cash flows and our cash flow forecast. So I'm going to open up the profit and loss uh, year to date comparison. And you'll notice that I have run, I have info where I can get more information about this. I can make this report a favorite and that's going to make it easier for me to find because it's going to be right on my favorites tab. So if it's a report that I like to run a lot, I may want to favorite it. And I can also get help. I am going to run this report and you'll notice that it opened up with my profit and loss statement. And I'm going to use this one as a way of showing you some of the things you can do with a report in QuickBooks. Uh, QuickBooks Online has the same as um, has the same capabilities in terms of customization. They're just in a little bit different place. So I can come in and I can customize this report in a variety of ways. Now, right on the surface, I can change the date range. So if I want to say this fiscal year, I can come in and I can do that. I can also put in a custom date by typing a from and a to date. I'm I can say what I want my columns to be. So I could do by class if I am running both a personal and a business or uh, using classes for breaking out departments or something like that. And I also have a, a sort. Now, different reports are going to have different options on this top line, uh, depending on the type of report. This is what's called a summary report because it doesn't have all of the details broken out. It has simple summaries. If I go into customize, I have the ability to do some customizations of the report. One of the other things I could do, which I could do right from the report, but I can also do in here, is I could run the report on an accrual or cash basis. You set up a default in your system settings for which way your business runs, but you can turn around and run the report in the other way. Um, and I'm not going to get into a big accounting discussion, but just on the surface, cash-based accounting is used a lot by professional services firms. In cash-based accounting, revenue and expenses are recognized at the time that they are actually, the money is received or the money is paid out. In accrual basis accounting, then the money is recognized, the income is recognized at the time that you um, invoice the customer and expenses are recognized at the time you get the bill, not when you actually pay it or when you actually receive the cash. So it can have a very large difference. Depending on the type of business you have, you may have to be on an accrual basis. Like if you have inventory, you have to be on an accrual basis. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of because that does have a big impact on cash flow, of course. You can determine your columns. And here's where I can say what previous periods I want to be comparing against because this is a comparison profit and loss statement. So I can add in different things. Under my advanced, I can say whether I want non-zero uh, rows and columns included. And then I can go in and I can set up filters. So if I only wanted to see my income accounts, I could do that. I can filter this in different ways. Now, on a profit and loss, you probably don't want to limit it because you want to see the bottom line, but you have the ability. And you can set up all kinds of filters by using the list at the left. And that list is in. Um, alphabetical order so you can scroll down or you can type and it's going to take you right to that particular uh, area. So if I wanted to filter by you know some part of the state or something like that, as long as my information has been entered consistently, I can do that. I can go in and I can provide a header and footer lines for my report and I can say how the report should be aligned. And then I can customize what my fonts and my numbers look like.
once I have customized this the way I want, I have the ability to memorize the report, which means I can get back to it in the future without having to redo my customizations. I can print it as a report or save it as a PDF. I could email it to someone. I can send it to Excel. I can also hide my header if I just don't want to see it on my screen, or I can collapse rows. And collapsing the rows or expanding the rows means anything that is a sub account of another account is going to disappear from my view. So you'll notice job materials has a whole bunch of things that are sub accounts of it. If I collapse, I'm only going to see the top level accounts. The rest disappear. When I come down to the very bottom, I can see my net income and I'm doing OK. I've got 14,750. Now I am comparing against my same year. If I customize this and I compare against the previous period, and maybe I want to see uh, as percent of income as well, and I want to see the percent change, OK. Now I can see how I'm doing compared to last year. Well, last year I had a huge loss. This year I'm doing, I'm profitable. So I can look at it and I can see, well, where are the differences? And think about what changed to figure out why I'm doing much better and maybe make sure that I institutionalize those changes. If I'm doing worse, that's something I want to dig into and figure out what I can change. And then this percent of income column is showing me what percent of income each line item is. So if I see something that's very large, like my um, three point, my rent is three point seven percent of my expense of my income, is that a good amount or is it a bad amount? Well, there are um, places you can research online to get comparisons. Um, your accountant may be able to help you. Those kinds of things. I'm not going to memorize the report, but if I have memorized the report, I will see it either in my memorized report list or when I go to reports, memorized report in my memorized report list. Now, if you are going to use memorized reports, one trick I recommend is creating report groups. You'll notice in this list, we have a group called accountant that has reports under it. We have a group world banking that has reports under it. You can create a new group by clicking on the memorized report and saying new group and creating a group called my reports, or you could break them into different categories depending on what you want to do. And what I like to do is put a period in front of the ones that I want to keep up at the top. Because once you put the period, that report group's going to be up at the top of the list. And so then when I go in, I can go reports, memorized, and I can get right into my report, my top group, and find the reports that I most need. So it makes it very quick and easy to get to your reports. Um, Karen, this might be a time yep. for a, a yep. couple of questions. I, uh, I do see I do see them. So um, I'll read them out and then I'll try and answer them. Okay. So um, I have two small businesses, but I'm the only employee each, just two different services. One is an LLC, the other a sole proprietor. Do I need two QBO subscriptions or can I do two classes in one? Each business has separate checking account, PayPal integrations, and credit cards. In that case, I would suggest two separate subscriptions because each one is a separate taxable entity, and you not only want to really track them separately, but also if you combine them into a quick, single QuickBooks company, and there is ever a problem where somebody sues one of the entities, if they find that you have combined these, or if you have any kind of other issue, and you, they, people find that you have combined these in a single program, somebody could make a case that they are really a joint entity and 
the liability from one could pass over to the other. So I would recommend keeping them completely separate. It also is going to make your tax reporting much easier because you can run the reports you need for each one rather than trying to segment them out. Um, let's see, somebody asked if the recording is going to be being sent out. Um, I believe you mentioned how that people can get to it. Right. Everybody will be sent a link to the recording. OK. Um, somebody asked what app I recommend to connect Stripe with QuickBooks. PayPal is direct, but Stripe is not. I know that there are apps that can do that. I don't do a lot of work with Stripe, so I do not know off the top of my head. Um, I would go out to, if you're running QuickBooks online, I would go out to the to the uh, Intuit App Store, which you can get to from directly within QuickBooks online. There is a, uh, a little line that says apps on it. And if you search for Stripe, it will help you find um, a link. When you are evaluating apps, you want to test them out, ask lots of questions, because they don't all integrate the same. And you want to know what information is going to be brought in and is that adequate for your needs. Um, let's see the next one. I own an SMLLC drone service business started recently, providing photography and inspection services. Is QB and the yearly cost? more advanced than what I need if I'm just starting out. Well, you can start with, um, you know, a simple one, uh, one of the lower levels like QuickBooks Pro, or if you want to use online um, with the not, I probably wouldn't do simple start, but the, uh, the, um, um, the lower level just above that. Um, but I think it's a good idea because if you put things, yes, you could keep a checkbook and yes, you could put things into a spreadsheet. But when things are in a checkbook or things are in a um, spreadsheet, you can't get timely reports. And I really think being able to get timely reports is very important. So I do think it's a good idea, but you also want to make sure you set it up correctly to get started. Uh, I have one QBO company and my bookkeeper separates them by locations. You send my, your CPA separate P&Ls. Absolutely, you can do that. There is the, that is the, if assuming you are, uh, locations is a feature in QBO, not in QuickBooks desktop. In QBO, we have both locations and classes, depending on the version you're using. In desktop, we only have, um, classes, and I'm not going to get into the definition of that right now. Um, but they, uh, and you can do that, but just remember, it is extra work, and you um, are, you, you are um, going to have the risk of liability, severance of liability, if that comes up, that can be a factor. Um, Someone asked if using QuickBooks saves you money with the CPA. It can, because it gives you the ability to analyze your books and have all of the information quickly and easily. If you take a shoebox at the end of the year and hand it to your accountant, they are likely going to be charging you for coding all of that. And it may not be as accurate. It's going to be dependent on, did you capture everything? It's going to be dependent on your memory, you know, what was this receipt at Staples for so that I can properly classify it and those kinds of things. So I definitely think it does save money with your accountant. Um, somebody asked, what's the difference between QuickBooks and Quicken? So they used to both be owned by Intuit, but a few years ago, Quicken was sold off and is no longer owned by Intuit. It's a separate company. Quicken is really designed for personal. It does a great job of doing loans and doing investment accounts like stocks and bonds and things like that. It's designed for personals. QuickBooks is designed to serve the needs of businesses. Um, someone asked, how do you handle the penny discrepancy when using Square? Because QB and Square calculate the sales tax differently. Um, there are probably a bunch of different ways you can do that. Um, I would try to get the, um, and it's not something that I have a lot of expertise in, because again, I don't work with Square. 
Um, but, um, you know, it's going to really depend on how you're reporting your sales tax. Um, you can put it in, a, you can just have a line item on your, uh, on your uh, if you're using uh, sales receipts or invoices, you can have a line item for that penny to adjust the sales tax. Depends on how you're doing your sales tax calculations and um, things like that. So sales tax gets really complex and I could do a whole topic on that. Um, where can I find, find qu free QuickBooks training and tutorials? So there's lots of stuff out on YouTube. Um, some of it is better than others, but you can find it from there. If you are using QuickBooks online, there is built-in training there as well. Um, a few things. Um, so that's a couple of options. Um, you know, but you also get what you pay for. And so free services are not going to be able to answer questions that are specific to your business. So there is some benefit to learning on your own, but then maybe also getting some uh, training. Um, asked if I know a payroll service that specializes in connect, correcting or amending end of year tax forms in W-2s. I do not. Um, I don't know how you've been doing your, how you did your uh, stuff previously, but if you were using a payroll service, then they should be able to fix it for you. Um, you might want to look in um, the Find a Pro Advisor. Um, it depends. You may not need a payroll service, depending on what the issue is. You may need a good, an accountant who understands payroll and can address the issues for you. So it may not be something that you would actually do through a payroll service. Um, can Etsy and Shopify be directly linked to QuickBooks? I know that there are apps that can link them to QuickBooks Online. You would want to check the QuickBooks Online app store. Um, I think we have then, one last question, Karen, yeah. and that is uh, for profit and loss comparison charts, is, there, is it possible to include multiple years in the same report? Yeah, oh, that's a great question. So if you run your profit and loss, so one of the things you can do is if you just take and you run a standard profit and loss statement, let me pull that up. And I set it for multiple years. So let me say I set this for 1-1-2021 one, one, through 12-31-2026. This is a test company, so the things. And instead of show columns total only, I change it to year, I'm going to see the profit and loss for each year. So the comparison report does limit you to kind of one year or one comparison period, but you can put in uh, on the standard, you can easily change what your columns are and you're going to see your full years. Great. That's that's probably all the time we have for questions. Okay. You can probably go back to the okay. uh, yep. PowerPoint if you want. Okay. Uh, our next SCORE webinar, by the way, is uh, this Thursday at noon, Create Your Comeback Success Story. Again, SCORE offers free individual mentoring, so please use the link on the, well, it's not on the screen, but it's you can use our website and click the Request a Mentor button. Also, please fill out your evaluations that will be sent at the end of the webinar. On behalf of SCORE, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's SCORE live webinar. In closing today, a big thank you to Karen for presenting today and have a nice rest of your day, everybody. Thanks.